Gulf View Lounge and Motel. The Gulf View Lounge operated from 1946 until 2005. When the Gulf View was built in 1946, it was a lounge and motel, and restaurant. The lounge, motel, and restaurant were operated as three separate businesses that complemented each other. In the late 1940s, the Gulf View was popular with the effluent crowd, which had a zest for partying. The Gulf View had everything they wanted. The lounge was beautifully decorated, and even had red crushed velvet curtains hanging from the walls. In the early years of the Gulf View, a piano player would entertain the patrons. The motel was on the second floor, it had numerous adjoining rooms, which made for many interesting parties in the motel. The restaurant was in the east wing on the ground floor. The restaurant served steak and seafood dinners, and provided room service for the motel, that is, finger sandwiches and snacks for the parties upstairs. The balcony of the motel which overlooked Highway 1, gave a stunning view of the Gulf of Mexico. In the early 1950s, the Gulf view was sold. At this time the lounge and motel was redecorated. The piano and piano player was replaced with a jukebox. At this time, the Gulf view was becoming popular with social clubs that frequently visited Grand Isle. During this time, the Gulf view was one of the busiest hospitality establishments on the island. The lounge and restaurant remained open 24 hours a day. Rooms at the motel were booked months ahead of time. On the weekends, the employees of the Gulf View made more money in tips than they did in salary for the month. Around 1955 or 1956, amateur filmmakers began using the Gulf View as a base of operations for their productions. No cinematography productions were filmed at the Gulf View. The filmmakers housed their small production crews in the motel. This led to long-standing patrons of the Gulf View being crowded out. In the early 1960s, the Gulf View was sold once again. With the offshore oil industry expanding in the Gulf of Mexico the Gulf View was catering more and more to contract oil field workers and sailors. By 1964, the motel was more or less being used as a bunkhouse for oil field workers. The restaurant was no longer providing room service to the motel nor was the restaurant open 24 hours anymore. At this time, the stockroom for the lounge was expanded on the west wing, and a laundromat was added to the east wing. Additional motel rooms were added to the rear of the Gulf View. In 1965, when Hurricane Betsy was approaching the island many of the oil field workers decided to remain on Grand Nile at the Gulf View. As the owner of the Gulf View was evacuating the island, he told the oil field workers they could help themselves to drinks at the bar as long as they looked after the lounge and motel. The Gulf View and oil field workers survived Hurricane Betsy, but the liquor did not survive the oil field workers. During the early 1970s, the oil field boom was well underway. The motel rooms at the Gulf View were now exclusively rented to oil field contract workers. The front desk in the hotel lobby was closed. As the oil field boom progressed so did business in the lounge. Just about every night of the week it was standing room only in the lounge. It was like this until the oil field boom went bust in the early 1980s. Around 1980 the restaurant at the Gulf View closed never to reopen again, and the upstairs balcony of the motel was boarded up. During the oil field boom, there were many wild and woolly nights at the Gulf View. There was a wild party every night of the week in the lounge. After the oil field boom went bust, a plaque with the oil field prayer on it was placed over the bar in the lounge, and it read as follows, O oh Lord give us one more good boom and the wisdom not to FK it up. After the oil field bust, the lounge took on an atmosphere of a neighborhood bar. Halloween parties and Christmas parties, and Mardi Gras parties were held in the lounge by the owner. The motel rooms were once again being rented to anyone who needed a room. In the mid-1990s, the owner of the Gulf View went into semi-retirement leaving his adult children in charge of day-to-day -day operation of the lounge, motel and laundromat. A few years later the owner of the Gulf View passed away. Six months after the owner passed away, it became increasingly difficult to get employees who worked in the lounge to work the midnight shift. They never said why. The adult children of the deceased owner began working the midnight shift by themselves, and they closed the motel and never reopened the motel. After several months, they began closing the lounge at midnight, without explanation. 
It did not matter how many thirsty patrons with pockets full of money were in the lounge at midnight, the lounge was still closed until the following morning. On a late night, in the early summer of 2003 a fire mysteriously broke out in the upstairs balcony of the motel. The gulf view was closed until necessary repairs could be made. A week after the fire, an oddity occurred at the gulf view. From the parking lot of the grocery store across the street from the gulf view, several people witnessed the oddity. In the window of the lounge of the gulf view the neon sign lit up, and then the jukebox could be heard playing loudly. The police were called. When they arrived, the neon sign was still lit up, and the jukebox was playing another album. All the doors were padlocked from the outside. As they peered through the window no one could be seen in the lounge, however, the lights behind the bar were on illuminating the shelves of liquor behind the bar. No one in a position of management could be found to unlock the doors in order for the police to investigate. The utility company was called to re-disconnect the electricity to the Gulf View. When service personnel from the utility company arrived, they were met with a perplexing situation. The electrical service was still disconnected. Utility company personnel searched all around the exterior of the Gulf View to find where the electricity was being fed to the Gulf View. They never found the source. Then suddenly the jukebox quit playing in the middle of an album and the neon sign on the lights behind the bar went dark. A week after that occurrence, the lounge portion of the Gulf View was able to reopen. As the repair operations progressed there was talk of the motel portion being renovated and reopened, and there was talk of reopening the restaurant portion as a sandwich shop. Then suddenly all repairs and renovations were cancelled abruptly, and the laundromat was closed. Only the lounge remained open, kind of. One of the managers for the lounge quit with no explanation. The remaining manager closed the lounge for days at a time without explanation. Over time, long-standing patrons quit bothering to see if the beloved watering hole would be open or closed on any given day. In August of 2005 the Gulf View suffered roof damage and extensive flood damage from Hurricane Katrina. In spite of the Gulf View being a local historic landmark, and offers of assistance from government officials, and historical societies, there was no sincere effort by management to restore the Gulf View. One prominent local business owner offered to purchase the Gulf View and restore it himself. His offer was rebuffed. For the next three years the Gulf View remained abandoned before it was torn down. There are those who claim, if you go to where the Gulf View once stood, after midnight, on quiet still nights, after all the other businesses have closed for the evening, and only the surf can be heard gently rustling with the sandy beach and stand where the lounge used to be and patiently listen very, very closely you can faintly hear a jukebox playing popular albums from the past and the jubilant voices of patrons from bygone days.